Now, I'm sure a lot of y'all have heard of the alder fly. It was, in fact, the first trout fly in Mary Orvis Marbury's favorite flies published in 1892. Of course, that was the alder wet fly, and that's usually what you see. Do any search of alder fly pattern, and you're gonna find a lot of wet flies and nymphs. And I think I've figured out why. The alder fly, I'm talking the actual insect, is not an adult very long. They live in streamside bushes. Usually it's the alder bush, and that's how it got its name. The adults lay their eggs on the leaves, which hatch and then fall into the water, where they live for up to two years as a nymph. They hatch into adults in the late spring or summer, but they're only an adult for two to three weeks. So that is my hypothesis as to why this is not a common dry fly, but here's why I think it's not a bad idea for us to have a few of these in our boxes. This pattern will make a great caddis. Any water where you've got an olive or a dark caddis in the right size, this thing could be perfect. So I'm putting the ones I tied today in my winter dry fly box, and the next time I need a darker caddis, which I hope is pretty soon, I'm gonna give this thing a try. So there it is in the vise, an alder dry fly which is a fairly rare version of the alder fly. Now the recipe says sizes are 12 to 24, but I also read that it's a pretty big bug in its adult stage. So I'm going on a size 14. I'm gonna catch in some black thread down about halfway. Now I'm gonna catch in the body, just two or three strands of peacock curl, and I've already broken off the, the really brittle stuff. So I'll just catch it in right here about, take it back to about where the bend is starting. I'll leave my thread about halfway up the body. Now I'm not gonna spin these together, I'm just gonna wrap them up, let that thread hold them together, and we're gonna stop a couple eye lengths back. Couple extra wraps to really secure these. Now for the wing, we're gonna use some bronze mallard, either a natural or a dyed dark. This is naturals, the tips are dark enough, so grab a clump of this, and you'll see that they stick together. Sometimes I'll bunch them up, then lick my fingers, and then just roll them like that. Now, they're not, the tips might not be all aligned, but that's gonna be fine. We're gonna catch in just a little bit longer than the hook bend. Now you can be the judge if that's enough or do you want to put a little bit more. Keep in mind this is not what's going to help the fly float. This is just going to give it some profile. The, the collar hackle is what's going to help it float. So I am going to catch just a little bit more in right here. Now let's flatten this area out, get some room for our collar hackle. And for this, just a black dry fly hackle. Try to get it size to match the hook. So let's pull that around till yeah, about one and a half a hook gap. Now I'm gonna catch this in just right in front of that wing at the back of my hackle area so I can get a good four or five wraps here. Now grab your hackle pliers if you need. I've got about three and a half inches of feather so I'm gonna try to do it with my fingers. Okay, I was able to make that work, because it's not real heavily hackled. Just enough to really help it float. Now let's do a couple of extra wraps here, just to make room for our whip finish. And there you go, see if you have any cleanup. I think we're fine, just the smallest drop of head cement, and this guy's ready to fish. That's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care. We'll see you next time.